About six years ago, SF MoMA acquired a major uh, video installation by Bruce Conner called Three Screen Ray. And it was such an accomplishment for the artist, but also for us to finally embrace his work in film inside the museum that we thought it would be appropriate to look at the artist's entire work who had worked for 50 years in the Bay Area, who had died in 2008. And we were really curious to see how all these chapters in his life would look in a museum, would uh, integrate also his film work that predominantly had been shown in cinemas, obviously, um, inside this narrative of his work over 50 years. So for As of MoMA, that was a big statement. In San Francisco, we are dedicated to not only the history of modern and contemporary art, but also specifically to the history of artists working in California. I would add to that, the chapters are a perfect mirror of his desire to always change course, to always push ahead and do something different. And that is also one of the reasons why we call the show It's All True, because all these chapters or all these changes seem to be from radically different persons, artists. He doesn't seem to be just one artist, but many. And at the same time, there are common threads that weave through his entire career. And, and that disjunction, that uh, juxtaposition of changes, of um, evo avoiding categories in his work, and at the same time continuing his passion and his obsessiveness and his richness in detail, that was the most uh, beautiful, the most interesting, the most rewarding work for us as curators. Let me try to start by saying um, in, in the 50s and throughout the 60s, there was very much um, a sense of Cold War and the aftermath of World War II, uh, the nuclear uh, age, all of those topics were very much uh, felt by, but also feared by Connor and his contemporaries. So much so that this obsession with the critique of American cultural um, mainstream um, tropes, but also the capitalist society, um, at one point even led him and his family to move to Mexico for a year. Um, they came back to the East Coast and later came back to the Bay Area. But all the time throughout his career, he managed to be a biting critic of mainstream culture. Uh, he was also a biting critic of institutions, um, like SF MoMA, like lots of museums um, throughout his career. And at the same time, he was really asking for a truthful, honest, and passionate relationship in, th in art or through art. And I think for art or for artists, he is very contemporary. And we were wondering what that means. Why is his work relevant today or timely today? And, uh, and I would argue one of the reasons is that he was so untimely and so uncontemporary throughout his various chapters in his life. While he did have a relationship to you know, the various art movements, he always also did something else. He rejected this idea of mainstream, of uh, being in the market. He always managed to survive in the market, surprisingly, as a really, really independent mind, but at the same time also constantly critiqued the market. So um, that in itself is an accomplishment very few artists manage to achieve.